Hey everyone, what's up? Brian O'Donnell here, or Explore Create Capture. Welcome back to another video. So I was looking at the comments recently of my previous videos on YouTube so far. I know we're just starting out, but a few people have been asking for certain videos and this is me giving it to you. So one of the most popular requests is how to edit a cool photo. As most of you know, pretty much every photo you see online from a photographer or from pretty much any influencer, I can't hate that word influencer, but any like public person you see online is gonna be edited in some way or another. It's never gonna be a raw picture taken straight out of the camera. So you guys have asked for an editing tutorial, here's an editing tutorial. I'll be doing different ones and different styles of editing and different types as we go on. Today I'm gonna to be showing how to make your colors pop using Lightroom. I'm gonna be using Lightroom Mobile for this or I'm gonna be using the iPad which is basically the same as Lightroom Mobile, just a bigger version so it's easier to see. But you can also get it on the computer, the mobile version's free, I really recommend it. It's so good for editing, it has so many different tools and yeah, it's free. If you pay for the full version, it's not very expensive. I think it's like five euro a month and you get a ton of added features. The reason I chose is to talk about how to make your colors pop is because I was scrolling through Instagram. The amount of photos I see, you're probably the exact same, that you see a really cool photo, but the person's just gone saturation 100, clarity 100, everything just maxed out and it looks absolutely dreadful, especially the saturation part. So saturation basically makes your colors really colorful. Okay, so that sounds a bit weird. So basically it makes your reds look more red and your blues look really blue. And if you go too far, it looks absolutely dreadful. It looks so bad. Please don't oversaturate your photos, ever. I'm probably crying for it every now and again, but I really try not to, you know, oversaturate because it's just, ah. So with that said, I'm gonna be showing you how to selectively saturate parts of your image. So using Lightroom, you can basically select the reds in a picture and choose to only saturate the reds, but let's say the blues won't be saturated. So the reds in the picture will appear really red, but the rest of the picture that isn't red will stay normal. So you can keep the balance between things you want to have bright and colorful and things you don't instead of everything just. All right, enough talking. Without further ado, let's go edit an image. Okay, so this is the picture we're gonna be editing today. It's a picture I took about two or three weeks ago. I uploaded to Instagram and it got a fair bit of traction or people were really liking the picture, saying the colors are class in it. But this is the before picture. I'm gonna be going from this plain picture, from this raw picture, going my step by step to get the final product. And I'm going through each step I take along the way to get from the before to after and it'll look really sharp at the end. I hope, I hope I can do this. Bit more pressure in front of the camera to edit, but I think it'll be grand. Okay, so one of the first things I do when I start editing a picture is I crop it to the right size. So I usually do portrait shots because it can be uploaded to Instagram that way. So we'll flip the image first, get it upright. It's really tilted to the side there. So we'll straighten it up using the straighten. Oh, it can't straighten automatically, so just straighten yourself by sliding around the bottom. I'd like the eyes on the same level, so I'll just level them out. Now, there's so much empty space in the top top and the right side so I'm gonna crop in and get rid of that now the Instagram ratio is 4 to 5 so I'll change my aspect ratio to 4 to 5 crop around until I'm happy with the result maybe we'll straighten it a bit more so I'm gonna crop using the root of thirds here basically I want the eyes of the subject to be on the two parallel lines dividing it into three because that's where you want your most important parts of the image to be so if I have both eyes the eyes are obviously the most important in the picture, so I'm gonna have them on the third lines. You can also put the most important parts on the third lines going across, the, what are the horizontal, vertical, horizontal uh, lines going across, but in this picture, I think in terms of symmetry and everything, because it's a very symmetrical picture, I'm gonna put the eyes as close to the center, maybe slightly lower than center, and right in the middle, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so after I've cropped, the first thing I do is just go to your basic exposure, contrast, highlights, etc., and just start fidgeting with them. What I do is, it's probably not the most professional thing, but I basically, I use the slider, I slide one direction, I slide the other direction, see what looks best, and settle where I think it looks best. So we can see a little bit more of what we're looking at here. We've brought some detail, this is the before, this is the after. As you can see, the shadows have been lifted. You can see more, so now you know exactly what you're gonna edit. Okay, now I'm just gonna go to the color section, see if it needs temperature. It definitely doesn't, I know beforehand it doesn't but I still do the slide. I see it doesn't need a tiny bit, maybe a little bit warmer. I mean, it doesn't really make a big difference. Vibrance, slide up and down. This is exactly what I'm talking about with oversaturating. Look, saturation up. Oh, it's just, it's a cool picture. It looks so much better like unedited than it does with saturation cranked up. So don't oversaturate. Put the vibrance up a tiny bit, drop the saturation down to maybe minus A, put the vibrance up to about 15. Yeah, cool. Okay, now I'm gonna show you selective editing. So if you tap on this multicolored rainbow circle button thing, 
it takes you to this place and it has color mix there as you can see and I can tap between colors I'm tapping between oh, I'm not gonna list all the colors but yeah you can see them so basically if I tap on blue color or dark blue and I slide this slider the hue slider it's gonna change all the blues to pink if I go this way it's gonna change them all to green if I go this way and as you can see nothing else in the whole picture is changing color apart from the blues so this is really cool this is what I was saying you should if you're gonna saturate something saturate a certain color but don't let the whole image get saturated because then it just looks mank. I just slide back and forth to see does the yellow hue make a difference are yellows in the picture and are they changing anything there's no yellows in this picture so even no matter how much I slide this it's not gonna make a difference so I can just ignore that Quick tip for you as well, if you're sliding back and forth and you're trying to stop it exactly on zero because you want to undo something, just go somewhere near zero, double tap on the thing and it returns straight to zero. Quick tip. Okay, I don't know the order like proper professionals and everything do their editing in. I tend to go through my light, color and effects first and then I do the tone curves and any healing or selective edits need to be done. So in the effects, I tend to just up my texture, up the clarity. I know some people hate up in Cardi, like the tripod, but it does bring out those extra details that might not look as sharp, but if you drag up the details a bit, it'll look sharp again. So I think it's a good tool to have. Dehaze, I do not need to dehaze that. Every, oh God, <laughs> everything about the dehaze thing. The dehaze thing can only really be used for skies, I've found. It's just, everything else just makes it look mank. Although it is for dehazing. So I don't know why you use it for anything else. So onto the tone curves, these are pretty complicated, but you generally just go for an S shape along them. Now selective edits, these are really cool. So we want to bring out the eyes in the picture, so we'll make a circular selective edit, draw it over the eye, Go to light, bring the exposure up, see what the highlights do. Highlights will bring a bit of it. Bring it highlights will bring a bit of detail back. Clarity does bring back clarity, but it makes it terrible. So we'll put a bit of texture in them. As you can see, dehaze doesn't work for any oh god. It's like Avatar. As you can see the difference between the two eyes. One eye looks really sharp, the other looks dull and bland and blending in. So all you have to do, duplicate that brush drag it over onto the other eye and the same edits will be applied to that eye and there you go Okay, so it's looking really cool so far. This is our before, this is our after. And yeah, as you can see, the eyes are really blowing out at you at the moment. I've got that shadow across the balloons. I'm really happy that it turned out. Before, after, before, after. As you can see, the blues have been saturated and luminanced up a bit, so they're more blue. Well, I made them a little bit greener, but like, yeah, they're still blue. As you can see, they've been affected. They're brighter now, but the skin isn't bright. The skin has stayed the same. You don't want to have a really blue eyes and then a really red skin because you've blown up the color of your skin right now. Like, So I wanted to keep the skin at the same color, same temperature and everything, but change the balloons and change the eyes. So I've just done the blues raise them up, a few tone curves here and there, and this is what you end up with. Okay, so I hope that went well. I hope you enjoyed watching that, following along, and hope you learned a few tricks along the way. That was my first editing tutorial I've ever done. It probably wasn't perfect, I understand that, but if you did like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see any different sorts of edits, I know I've got like moody pictures, I've got sunset ones, I've got long exposure ones. If you guys want to learn about different styles of editing, this is just the one I decided to do today, because seeing people oversaturate images is so annoying. I don't know about you, but I, I just, I'm scrolling and I see that, no. Not like, nah, I'm gonna unfollow them, just, 
nah, I might not like it. So I'm gonna end the video by showing you some before and afters of other pictures I've taken where I've done selective saturation of certain parts of the image. They're usually my colorful images that pop out at you. The other ones I wouldn't tend to use saturation really at all. It's just about the bright, vibrant ones, happy ones, you know, so ones that remind you of summer. So before I show them, make sure to tap subscribe, comment what you would like me to do a video of next. Hope you like this video, I'll catch you in the next video. And hope you enjoy these before and afters. See you soon.